Hey guys, really wanted to um, give kind of a little status update on the Atari 800 core for RetroArch. Well, I kind of fell into this because I was doing some work for a friend to make a retro gaming system for the Raspberry Pi and when it came time to gather all my stuff together, I stumbled upon the fact that Laka had built-in support for the Atari 800 core, and thus the Atari 800 computer. I thought, awesome, let's take and uh, see what we could do with it. And as I used it, I realized, oh, I could make some changes to actually make this a lot better. And I'll go ahead and show some of them here. Now, of course, the uh, Atari 800 emulator supports both the Atari 8-bit machines as well as the 5200 machines, as you can see here. We can just as easily take and play 5200 cartridges just fine. see here, all blazer runs just great. And since it's RetroArch, we can go in and turn on various shaders. Uh, for example, loading a particular shader preset, CRT emulation perhaps. Go back to where we were. And as you can see, it, it works extremely well. Shader emulations, overlays, of course, are supported, and all of that's just great. The 200 works great. Uh, the one thing it's missing right now is the keypad support, which I, it's on my list to add. So, looking at other bits and pieces, in addition to the 5200 stuff, of course, we have first class support for the Atari 8-bit computer stuff. Uh, I went ahead and created an icon, which I'll take and add to the assets package. And we have here a whole list of uh, software in ATX format, courtesy of the Atari 8-bit Software Preservation Project, which is doing a fantastic job preserving original copies of all this software. And I mean, as we can see, it's uh, all the, I, we have here a whole list of different uh, bits of software. Some of it requires basic, some of it requires OSB, some of it only runs on an XL or an XC, etc., etc. But I can basically just pick something. Have it go, work just fine. Or let's go ahead and uh, Let's go ahead and pick something particularly problematic. Let's say uh, Archon, for example. This will not boot because I haven't uh, set anything for it, and uh, it's cup protected image, and the default settings will uh, cause it to crash. But we will take and go from that point. As we can see there, it's trying, and nope, not going to do it. Electronic Arts, typical stop, not going to happen. So, no problem. We'll go ahead and reset. And actually, we're going to take and do this a little bit differently here. We're going to go ahead and run it again. And this time, we're going to go straight out to the menu. We're going to go to options. And I've added a handful of options that will really help. We're going to make an options file for this guy. Select OK, create the options file. And we're going to set a particular Atari 800 system. 130XC is fine, but we also have 200, 400, 800 OSB, 800XL, 64K, and 130XC. I'll add a few more, such as 320KXC and 1088KXC uh, very shortly. We can specify a particular video standard, which is very nice for European games. Uh, Electric Light is a good example of what really needs this switch. We have the ability to take and set internal basic. Uh, this is great for games that require basic. We have the ability to turn on and off SIO acceleration so the cup protected stuff can work. In our case, we need that turned off. Oof. 
go ahead and turn that off. We also have the ability to boot from cassette and uh, for cassette titles and we also have the ability to turn on or off high-res artifacting for games that need it and they don't. Since I currently don't have the NTSC filter fully ported over for the RetroArch core, I'm using the old style Atari 800 artifact, which is one of the big reasons why I have this switch in here, so it can be turned off for clearer text. Uh, these here were originally here for the original implementation of Atari 800. Uh, they're not really needed much anymore except for the joy hack for Robotron. Okay, great. Um, so once you make a se uh, selection here for one of those options, it goes ahead and reboots the core for you with the new settings. Now I will go ahead and mention here uh, that these files that I am loading here are not correct copies, these are ATX copies, which means that in addition to the raw sector data, uh, some flux transition data is also encoded, uh, and as well as you know various uh, elements that are required for various cop protections in order to run correctly. It's all here, and it, it, it works. And as you can see here, it's just it's booting it quite fine. It does mean that since I'm using uh, uh, turned off SIO acceleration, uh, you're having to wait the whole time here to actually boot it. But as you can see here, the game's ready to go. Now, um, We'll go ahead and just to show you, we'll take and close this content and load it again. And since I made an options file for this, it will take and load those options the next time through so I don't have to set them again. If you're paying attention to the indicator on the lower left hand corner on the lower right hand corner of the screen, you can see it trying to do the copper protection, the sector alignment, timing, and everything. And then when it's successful, you see the electronic arts logos change appropriately. So we've already gone through that, no problem. We'll take and pick something else here. So uh, the artifacting support is really, really helpful for certain games. Uh, a good example of this is Choplifter, which you really can't play without it. While well, you can play it without it, it just doesn't look right. But it works just fine. And this is another game that since I'm running the, um, the uh, original, I have to turn off SIO acceleration. It's nice that we actually have that in there. If you listen closely, you can hear the loading beeps in the background. And yep, 32K game. But, you know, as you can see, happening quite well. Now, as far as integration is concerned, we have reasonable integration with the gamepad. Uh, one of the piece bits that you have uh, enabled is when you go into options, you set your, or sorry, controls for under options here. You set your control to Atari joystick or Atari keyboard for, for certain uses. And once you have that, you have the R button here on your controller will bring up the Atari menu where you can set various emulator options on the fly. Uh, the X button goes back out uh, and so on and so on. You also have select and start mapping to their appropriate bits. The L button here maps to option. So for games that really have uh, have a, a complicated kind of selection scheme such as uh, Jumpman that works out quite well as well.
This one didn't need SIO acceleration turned off, so it boots really quickly. Hit the select key again, like you do in the real Atari. Option to change and select your particular image there. Hit start. And it's a good idea to have a keyboard for games like this. And the keyboard is supported, so pushing keys on the keyboard uh, will do the right thing. And the keys are located in their natural positions on the Atari keyboard. So the quote, for example, is located under the number two. And it's kind of hard for me to play here while I'm talking, but you know. Anyway, and as you can see, yeah, just working quite well. Um, let's see, what else can I show here? Problematic games that require specific, uh, uh, specific uh, versions of the operating system work just fine. If once you create a particular game options file and set for 400-800 OSB, so games like Crazy Critters works just fine. Um, other bits and others include uh, such games like, uh, mm, let's see. I just had one on top of my head. Oh yeah, Baja, Bu Baja Buggies is a good example of a good game that requires OSB unless you've patched it. So, uh, yeah. There we go. Of course, if you have ATR patched versions of these games, they work fine just as well. Um, I pulled these directly from the Atari 800 Preserva Software Preservation Initiative and used the uh, Playlist Buddy for RetroArch to take and build the appropriate playlists. Yeah. So, I mean, overall, it supports uh, pretty much the vast majority of the uh, Atari 8-bit software. It runs extremely well uh, from both from all the way from the old to the new, without much of a without much of a fuss. So, uh, even basic games like, uh, for example, this copy of Blackjack here. Now I have basic enabled in this case, there's no disc, but since it's a cassette title, loading from cassette runs just fine. And with the keyboard integration that we have here, makes up for, uh, for, a, great, uh, for a great playing experience. games work just fine so you can you pretty much have the run you pretty much have the run of every of every type of game that you can think of for the Atari 4800 as well as the XL and XE that can work uh, there are some things that I want to add particularly save state support uh, so that we can uh, basically also handle net play so that we can also handle fast forwarding and rewinding uh, and uh, I also want to take and improve the virtual keyboard integration uh, so that uh, devices that don't have a keyboard, such as tablets running under Android or certain game systems that don't have keyboard options, can also take and uh, play these games just as well as I can here, even with this uh, little USB keyboard that I have here. So, um, nice thing about having a keyboard, the keyboard basically allows you to play certain games that absolutely require the keyboard, such as Star Raiders, which is absolutely required for you to have it. So, pressing start, 
I can move using my gamepad, but do you have advanced uh, functionality? I need the keyboard here, but using the keyboard here works just as expected. So there you go, just a quick little tour around the current state of the uh, Atari 400-800 core. Still more work to be done, but even at this point right here, uh, it's a very playable and very usable core uh, for playing just about everything, everything Atari 8-bit related that you can throw at it. I hope you all enjoyed this. More videos coming soon.